Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. The automatic 1111 interface for stable diffusion has just been updated to version 1.6.0 and with it come a whole bunch of changes I'm sure you've been waiting for such as better support for SDXL. Loads of things have changed so let's take a look at some of that new funky stuff. Probably the first thing you'll notice is that the interface has changed quite a bit. Some of those notable changes include the refiner, as mentioned, it, it now works properly. So there you go, you can select your checkpoint in there. I'm using the SDXL refiner. Obviously you can use any other model, but the refiner really does work best in there. One thing that may catch you off guard is both that refiner and high res fix are enabled when you open them. There isn't a little tick box that says enable this anymore. If it's expanded, it is enabled. So there they are both disabled. If you're hoping to use control net with SDXL, then I'm afraid that's not quite available yet, but hopefully sometime in September 2023. You may also notice a whole bunch of extra tabs across there as well. So now you've got textual inversion, hyper networks, checkpoints and LoRa's in there as well, just across a different set of tabs. If you go to image to image, you'll notice the same tabs there as well as the usual sketch in paint, batch, etc. And speaking of icons, you now have a load of them underneath your generations here. Thankfully, you can hover over them to see what they actually do. So there you've got open images in the output directory. There you can save images. There's zipping an archive send to image to image tab, send to in paint, and also send to extras. Other things to note in that extremely long list of features is the addition and reworking of some samplers. So if we have a look there, now you should see an absolutely enormous list. There are some new 3M1s and a bunch of other choices, plus a rework of samplers such as DDIM and PLMS, meaning they can now be used in image to image and with composable diffusion and SDXL. Here I've got an absolutely massive XY grid with a whole bunch of those samplers in each column and also a number of rows starting at 10 steps at the top all the way up to 50 steps along the bottom row. As you can see, this is one of my favorite samplers I've got first there, that's quite good. Got a little smiley face, but some of them don't do so well with the lower steps. So here you can see 10 and 20, that's all right, but this one not so good with the lower number of steps. If we scroll across a bit, we can see some of those new ones. So here we've got like the 3M and the Karas and the Exponential, and they're all, you know, fairly similar, all quite good quality, even at 10 steps. Let's scroll across even more and we'll see these last few on the end are actually very different. So all these ones have sort of the same sort of feeling to them. There's a little bit of a grouping going on there. We've got this sort of purpling with these and these are more like sort of greeny with little faces. So yeah, that, that's quite interesting to see the grouping, but their UniPC, one of the new ones that works with SDXL, also very nice. Personally, I like that one and I also like these new exponential ones, but you know, you'll have your own favorites. With this update, you'll also probably want to go and have a look at your settings as well. If you're updating and you've got an old version of Stable Diffusion, go into your settings, have a look at Stable Diffusion and check some of these. So checkpoints to cache in RAM is now obsolete, so make sure you've got that set down to zero. Now for my card, I'm gonna go through this in a lot more detail in just a moment, but these are the best settings for me. So I unticked only keep one model on device and I changed the maximum number of checkpoints loaded at the same time to two because we've got the base model and the refiner. Okay, so that's the setting I'm using at the moment, maximum checkpoints two, and I've launched the web interface using these options. I've got Xformers and no half VAE. Now, obviously this is you know, quite a quick way to launch it because I'm going to do a bunch of tests now to see exactly how much VRAM it uses and how much RAM it uses because you'll need to know this depending on your own system resources. If you've got a low-end graphics card, then you're going to need a high amount of RAM. 
basically. Let's go and have a look over here. And this is where you'd change some of those options. Normally you've got the web UE user, but if you're on Microsoft Windows and sure, if you're on any other operating system, if you have a quick look at that, there you can see set command line options. So that's where you'd normally do it, but I'm just running them from the command line for extra speed. Yes, I don't like having to edit text files each time. Let's have a look at all this RAM and VRAM usage. So before I've generated any images, let's just zoom out here so we can see this. I've got RAM usage there at 7.3, and I've also got a, a little chart there, historical data, but you can see it up here as well. GPU memory, I'm using 8.5 gig. So that's basically just with the SDXL base loaded. All right, so let's generate a rodent and see how that changes. We've got a cool rodent. As you can see, the memory usage went up to a max of 955, but basically it stayed under 10 gig. That's nice. And RAM usage is still quite low. However, if I generate a bunch more images, you'll see that RAM usage is slowly creeping up. Now I'm on 7.6. Let's have a quick look at the speeds there. And you'll see for that 20 steps, it's taking around five seconds, roughly 3.5 iterations a second. Let's do that again, but this time I'm going to enable the refiner. As you can see, obviously the memory usage has gone up there. The VRAM now going up to a max of almost 16 gig, but a much nicer image of a rodent there but once again if i keep generating images then that ram usage will creep up ever so slowly okay so that's great if you've got a high vram card like mine if you've got at least 16 gig if you set that to two you can load both your models into vram and your ram usage won't be too bad all right but what if you've got a low vram card so there i'm using minus minus low vram let's start that up see what happens this time all right, so once again, we've got fairly similar RAM usage there, 13.4 and VRAM 3 gig. Let's generate, see what happens there. Okay, that's pretty nice. VRAM usage remains pretty low. RAM usage up at 22. Okay, let's generate one more without the refiner, see what happens to that RAM usage. Okay, that's pretty cool. VRAM use remained below 4 gig continuously there, so that's fine, but RAM usage all the way up to 27. Let's try that with the refiner. We'll put the refiner in there, see what happens now. Okay, so that took quite a hit. While it was just doing the base model, it was absolutely fine, under four gig. But as soon as it hit the refiner, that jumped up to 10 gig and we're on 30.4 RAM usage as well. So it looks like if you've got a four gig VRAM card, you're not gonna be able to use that refiner. If we take a quick look at the speeds as well, obviously that is much slower with 37 or 39 seconds needed to generate those images. All right, now that was with Xformers, but what about if we use SDP attention? Does anything change there? Well, let's have a look and find out. Here I'm back up to two maximum checkpoints. Let's go back to text to image and see what our resource usage is like. So we've got eight gig VRAM and seven gig RAM used at the moment. Let's generate one of those. And that was fairly quick and fairly nice. So we're still at 7.4, 8.6. Let's generate a few more, see what happens to that RAM and VRAM usage. But that definitely stays under 10 gig for the VRAM and the RAM usage only creeping up slightly. Once again, let's enable that refiner, see what happens to our resources now. Okay, as expected, we've gone up to around 14 gig VRAM and we're around 7.7 .7 RAM usage if we keep generating some more with that refiner. Now it did sneak up to around 21 gig at one point there, but for the most part, it's under 16 gig and the RAM usage grows only very slowly. Let's have a look at SDP attention with low VRAM. What do we get with that? As expected, we've got low VRAM usage there, so three gig and 13 gig on RAM. Let's do a generation, see what happens now. Already there, we're up to 22 gig, but the VRAM usage is very nice. Let's generate another one there, see what happens. There, RAM usage has once again shot up, 
and there was a little spike there in VRAM usage, but for the most part, it remained quite low. If we enable that refiner once again, let's see how much we can destroy our resources. Okay, that was pretty nice. It did go up to about 8 gig. There was a little tiny spike in there I spotted, and we're already on 35.6 gig of RAM use. Wow. Okay, so yeah, low VRAM cards. Once again, avoid that refiner. As you can see, the options and settings you have can have a real impact both on performance and resource usage. If you've got a low-end GPU, then you're going to have to make sure you've got plenty of RAM. The SDP attention option and low VRAM options may be the best for you, but the chances are with that memory leak, you're just going to have to restart every so often to free up that RAM. If, on the other hand, you've got a GPU with the decent amount of VRAM and you're looking for the best performance, then set that maximum number of checkpoints over in the settings, stable diffusion, up to two, and use Xformers as well. That way the memory leak won't impact you as much and even with 16 gig of system RAM you shouldn't need to restart for several hours. Of course, as an alternative, you may wish to consider something like Comfy UI. Okay, so let's take a quick look at doing some prompts with that refiner enabled so we can see, you know, basically the sort of things that this can generate. And there we go, here's a very simple prompt, an amazing landscape painting with dark colors at midnight. And that's exactly what we've got. That's 20 steps and Euler. And we go, just make it quite big. That's, that's pretty cool, isn't it? So really simple prompts with SDXL. You barely even need any negatives. And you know, you can just describe it in English at the top. Really, really nice outputs there. Just let your imagination do the prompting. But if your imagination is letting you down, perhaps you'd like to watch another Nerdy Rodent video.